Welcome back everybody and thanks for being here. I appreciate all my subscribers and if you haven't subscribed yet, please consider it. It's free. And check out the website when you get time. Lots to see and do there. And I'm going to keep adding tech section and members rides. Okay, today what we're going to do, I'm going to make a little mixture up and we're still going to mess with this seized engine before I start wire wheeling the underneath of this car. I want to get this engine disassembled because I'm going to be ordering parts soon while I'm doing the body work. So I need to see what I need for the engine. I'm going to keep the original tins because the aftermarket cooling tins aren't very good, in my opinion. So we're going to go ahead and try to get this motor unseized. It might be a two-part series to strip it clear down to the crank, or it might not be. Depends how much I can edit the film down for you guys, you know. So I'll go ahead and show you what I'm going to do here. I'm going to let it soak. Of course, you know, you won't have to wait that long because I'll edit the film together. So let's get ready. First thing is first, we have our uh, yoke for the engine stand that I borrowed from my friend Corey. And check this out. I wanted to show you while we're here. Look at that. Now that's a six volt, so I'm going to have to change over to a 12 volt capacitor inside or whatever that's called. I don't know. My buddy uh, is pretty good with these. But it does work and everything. Has a little buzzing, but he showed me what needs fixed on it. That is going to look really good since we're going with the chrome dashboard and with the chrome stripping going back and forth. Outstanding. We're going to clean her up and polish her real nice. I like it. We're going to go ahead and take some uh, brake fluid and transmission fluid, mix it 50-50, and that's what we're going to end up soaking. So let's start doing that, and I'll pull the engine over here. All right, so let's fill this halfway with transmission fluid. Okay. And the rest with dot three brake fluid, although it doesn't have to be dot three. It fell off in there. This should be a good rust buster. So let me mix it up a little bit here. I mean, you don't got to go crazy mixing it up, but you know. Okay, and let me get a funnel. And we're going to pull the distributor also because I want to pour it down in the distributor drive. My buddy Kelso said a lot of times if a distributor is not left in the engine, which there wasn't, water went down in there and it could have seized up there also and rusted the gears. So we're going to shove some down that hole also. So let me slide the engine over and get a funnel. Okay, so down inside here we have a 13 millimeter and that'll be the bracket for the uh, distributor and we're going to pull the whole thing up and out. Okay. Come on. There we go. Ooh, that looks crappy down in there. Okay. All right. We got our funnel on there, and we got our concoction of tranny fluid and brake fluid mixed. So we're gonna dump some in there and let me put a little bit more. There we go. Now remember, I'm gonna rebuild this if it's a good block, so I don't care what this does to the bearings or anything right now. Okay, as you can see, let me pull you in close. It's just sitting in there. It's actually slowly going down. So I'll check it before I leave it for the night. So I got the engine tilted up on its side. As you could see, the two by six or two by eight, maybe. Yeah, it might be a two by 10. So that I can get it around the whole piston, okay? So I'm gonna soak this side tonight with the brake fluid and ATF. Let's see if that'll take it. And, whoops. OK. 
Okay, let's go to the other side. Alrighty, and let's pour that in. The brake fluid should help a lot. Brake fluid likes to fight rust. So, hopefully we have some luck with that. So, that's filled in there. I'm gonna take a peek in with a light, which you're not gonna be able to see. So, give me a second here. You're probably not gonna be able to see this, or maybe you can, but it's filled. Sorry, I was trying to hold three different things. Okay, and the other one is two. Those chambers are full. We're gonna go ahead and let that sit for 24 hours. Today is Saturday. I'm gonna come back tomorrow evening, flip it to the other side and get it up in the air, and then we're gonna soak that side. But you're gonna see this obviously all in one film together. <coughs> so let me let this sit tonight, but I'll see you in about 10 seconds. One thing I wanted to do, I almost forgot, is I want to open this up a minute. See what it looks like. Curious to know. And here comes all the oil. Now there's all kind of condensation in here. Let me get a piece of cardboard. Oh, I couldn't find cardboard, so. Wow. This is poopy. Wait, let me try some a minute. It's got to soak anyhow, but I'm kind of curious here. It's a 13 millimeter. I only got a quarter inch ratchet on it. Big deal. It'll work. I'm curious because I'm not a patient person. Come on. Not stuck. No, not as stuck. Come on, get out of there. There we go. I'm definitely going to let that soak in the cylinders, though. Yeah. Looks about normal. <laughs> I'm not worried about obviously mixing anything up. Can you guys see? Let me check the camera. Oh, okay. I was just making sure. Let me get a light on this, first of all. Yep, cylinders are full for this side for tonight. Lots of corrosion. I'll show you a close-up picture right here. So I'll let this soak. I was nosy. I wanted to see inside of there. This engine has been sitting for a long time, but that's okay. We're going to get it all apart and we're going to get it freed up because I'm determined now because I do got to get started on the uh, wire wheeling and the cleaning up and the rust bullets, you know, done on the chassis. But I'd like to get this tore down so I know what to order. Okay, so I've got the motor tilted up on its side so that the solution of ATF brake fluid mixture can go around the whole piston, hopefully. With it being tilled up, it should be okay. Uh, this chamber is still halfway filled where the distributor drive gear is, and hopefully that gets down there and loosens up if there's an issue. I'd already poured some down in the intake, so I'm not going to do that again. And uh, what I'll do then is get it up on its other side in 24 hours, which you'll see in a couple minutes, and uh, pour it in that side, let it sit for 24 hours. Even if I can't get it unfrozen, it don't matter we're going to go ahead and strip it right down anyhow. But I at least wanted to free it up to see if that would help before I try taking it apart because it would have been a little bit easier to do. So if not, if it don't free up in this film clip, we're just going to start ripping right into it. I'm going to get it up on the engine stand. We'll strip everything down, split the block in half. So I'm going to be doing three days worth of work, but you're going to see one film clip right now. So be right back. Okay, so it's been 24 hours. 
and I wanted to see, oh, that's still full. I thought it would seep by a little bit. The right chamber's empty. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to spin some spark plugs inside of there, put the valve cover on, and then tilt the motor the other way so that I can cover the whole piston, hopefully, with the solution. So let me speed the film up. I'll do that real quick. So I spun the plugs back in. What we're going to do is go to the other side and put the solution in the other cylinders. I spun the motor around, mixed up 50-50 ATF and brake fluid. I don't think that's all going to go down in there. I'll give it a few seconds, and if not, I'll draw it out. And we're going to fill this side up, let it sit for 24 hours, although for you about three seconds. And then we're going to try to turn it once more. If, in fact, it doesn't turn, then game on. We're just going to start ripping it all down and take everything apart, split the case. We'll get it apart. If I have to beat on the uh, jugs to the pistons, it really isn't a big deal because I'm going to re be rebuilding it anyhow. So, all right, I'm going to let that drain down in. Give me a few seconds. I'll be right back. So we poured it down the other two cylinders. We're going to give it 24 hours. Probably should wait longer, but I'm trying not to stretch this out too long because I'm going to rip it down regardless. Uh, I poured more down the distributor drive gear. I put some brake fluid down there, and that's it. And 24 Mars, I'm coming up, which you'll see in about two seconds. And we're going to try to break it free. If not, we're going to strip everything down. We're not going to wait around. So, okay, give me a second. All right, so it's been 24 hours again. And before I even started the camera, I tried very hard to break this loose. It's not happening. I'm not going to bore you any longer because I think we're... 15 minutes into the film or something. So we're gonna start taking it apart. I'll at least get it down to the bare block today. And if I think the film's not gonna be too long, I'll continue. If not, we'll make a part two. I didn't wanna make an hour long film because I think a lot of you don't sit and watch the whole hour, you know? So I'm gonna go ahead and start taking it apart now and get down to the block and maybe we'll even split it. We'll see what happens. If not, we'll do a part two. And we got the holiday coming up. I'm going to do something very special also. I'm going to do a 2021 review, not of what went on this year, but of what I accomplished all year on the channel and what we got done together in the popular films that were from a year ago, maybe you didn't get to see. I'll just show little snippets from it, nothing long, but it'll be a kind of an end of the year review after Christmas is over and before the new year starts. So let's go ahead and get on this and get some crap done. First, I'm gonna go ahead and loosen the other intakes cut off. Somebody cut the heat riser off. I get a 10 millimeter bolt that's left on this. We'll take that out. I previously sprayed all these down, so hopefully a lot of them come loose. That's leaf blower. My wife's outside the garage cleaning up leaves. Okay, where's my, ah, I'll use this. I'll see if it'll come loose. Don't matter, because I basically want, there we go, let's loose the tins off of this anyhow. So let's move to a 13, which you can see I already started to spin this one off. Alrighty. We're going to take these heater boxes off first and get them out of the way. So I'll speed certain parts of the film up. Oh. I thought I could sneak this off because this has been on there a long time. Almost. Uh, 
you all kinds of corrosion everywhere. Okay. So what I'm going to do now, there are screws in your cooling tins that hold the heater box on. There's tabs from them. So we'll go ahead and, wow, yeah, this thing ain't been running a long time. We'll go ahead and get them screws out. So let me readjust the camera the best I can. I want to get this on the engine stand as soon as my son stops by. It's a little heavy for me to be lifting up like that. So, okay, you got one right here. I'm not even going to try to do the straight screwdriver on it because it'll just round out. Now when we do assemble our new motor, we're not going to use the straight screws. Wow, that leaf blower is really loud, huh? We'll put 10 millimeter head bolts in there. And that's easier to deal with later. Yeah. Well, they're actually in pretty good shape, surprisingly. Okay, let's move to the back part of the engine so we can take this heater box off that side. So here is the other side of the heater box. We're going to go ahead, take these loose. If these heads turn out to be okay, which I doubt, but if they do, if there's no cracks or anything crazy, we'll clean them up real good. See if the studs need replaced or chase them with a, a die to clean the threads up. Although they seem to be good so far. I'm sure one will screw up. They always do. Always one. Got one more little screw on a tin. I'll show you it once I turn the motor over because you're not going to be able to get under there with me. I got the engine tilted up on its side. Oh, it would have been easier on the engine stand, but we'll get it up there shortly. Straight screwdriver isn't going to loosen that. There we go, but that did. So now we can take the last little bracket off really excuse me all they are is little tabs to hold the cooling tins to the heater boxes to fill that void so the air rushes under and cools the cylinders okay yeah, the heater boxes, I get the fan shroud off. I'll lift it up onto the stand then. Not a big deal. Okay. Let me back you up a second there. Let me try to get the heater box off before I set the motor down. And there it is. There's where the screws go into the cooling tins. Okay. Lots of debris in there. This will be fun to take apart completely, I think. Okay. Oh, come on, giddy up. There we go. Let's spin it around. Okay. I'm going to take the two 13 millimeter nuts off the back. Give it a little smack. Oh. And the stud ran away. This motor, the thing I'm concerned, the 12 millimeter again, is mostly the block. It was a semi auto stick, so hopefully I might have a good block here. But it didn't matter because my basic thing, uh oh, this one's going to give me trouble, is all the cooling tins, the factory German cooling tins and uh, fan shroud, stuff like that. Yeah, this is going to give me a problem. All right. I have to. I'll cut it right off. So I used the cutoff wheel on that. 
because these are junk. This the studs were screwed up anyhow. So I'm gonna go ahead, turn it around, do the front two. Make sure you're still in view. Mm. Okay. Although I'm, that's separate from the old exhaust, but I'll just pull it all off at one time. Not a big deal. I gotta get them two screws underneath. I wish she was done with that vacuum. Hope that isn't too much noise into the microphone. I won't know until I see it later and it will be too late. This is going to be something when we take this apart. Wow. Okay, I got to take the bottom screws out. Ah! These two screws for the heater boxes. Making a mess on the floor, but we can clean it up. Not a big deal. I'm used to having stuff on a engine stand. There we go. Oh, it's oozing out. I'm gonna have a heck of a mess to clean up, huh? Oh well. Part of the fun. Oops, there's a spring. Forgot the spring. Okay, let me let the engine down a minute. Come on back down. There we go. Okay. Oh, our next thing is going to be to get that fan shroud off. But first, we have to disconnect the thermostat because there's the rod that comes down through there that hooks up to it. So, let's get this cooling tin off. And, and these will clean up. Here, let me bring you in closer. Okay, so here's your thermostat. You're gonna take this nut loose here, the bolt, I'm sorry, and then the nut. So, take this one loose first because if you loosen that one, you're gonna have trouble breaking this loose. The whole thing will wanna bend around. So let's get this off. There's a rod coming down through there that we need to detach it from. Then we're gonna start disconnecting that fan shroud and get it off. Don't forget to save all your little bolts and washers. You'll need them and the little wavy washers. Those are German lock washers, technically. This all don't look corroded though. We'll find out when we take this off. Okay. And there's your bracket. Okay. And you're gonna turn this counterclockwise. It unthreads. I think this it either opens or closes. Now I can't remember. Can you believe that? And I've done a million of these. We'll figure it out. Okay. And there's the rod. Can you see it right there? That's what opens and closes the flaps on the back. And they're not even moving. Ooh, wait till we get this open. It's gonna be a sight to see. Okay, I'm gonna try to pull the intake off of this side because on the alternator, there's a strap here and the nut and bolt holds the strap down. Which holds the fan shroud down. 
So I'm going to try to get the intake out of the way. Might make things a little easier on this side. Oops. That'll come off with it. Okay, here, let me turn the engine for you. And there's one right here. And we have two Phillips screws. Pardon me. We got to take these loose. Oh, I got to get a bigger screwdriver. There's no other way to get the camera in there. I'll show you what I mean. Just give me two seconds and, and it won't matter if I unscrew the screw in front of you. Okay, there's just two screws right there. I don't know if this is gonna come loose. Okay, so on your alternator stand, you can see the bolt down in there. All right, so we gotta take out loose. I got a swivel on a quarter inch ratchet to hold the bolt. There we go. And you gotta sneak a wrench under here to hold the nut underneath. This one's a pain in the butt. If I could have slipped the intake out of the way, it would have helped. But this thing's so rotted and decayed on there. Let me get this back in there. There we go. I got the wrench sitting on a nut. So far it's holding it till it falls, because it will. And it did. Okay. And then we'll slide it back off the alternator stand. You can see how I slid it back against here. Alrighty. Okay, so now we are on the driver's side of the fan shroud, and there's a 10 millimeter nut there, or a bolt, I should say, that holds the, it down to the tin. And I forgot my wrench. So I'm gonna sneak in there. Now it's slotted, so you don't have to take it all the way off. So we're gonna loosen it up just enough. See that? Okay. All right, somebody already removed the one out of the other side. I'm not sure why. Now, I'm gonna loosen up some of this linkage from the flaps, and the reason is there's a bolt here. Let's get that first. It holds it down, 10 millimeter. Somebody really messed around with this before because there's weird pieces of metal, and but that's okay. I really need all this tin work. And I want to split this block open anyhow. I'm curious if I can even get the dang thing apart. Okay, that's loosened up. Now we got to remove our spring. And that's what holds the flaps. And then the thermostat kind of fights against it and they work with each other. So don't lose your spring because you'll probably need it. Unless you have extras laying around. Okay. Let's take this clip off. Come on, there we go. Just regular clips, nothing fancy. I don't know if you could see them. It's hard to hold that, okay. And I gotta take this one off. I don't lose these. It's like I just dropped one in there. There we go, I got it. Okay. And the washer, of course. Dropping everything today. Great. Okay. I wanna go to the other side here and take this one off and I'll show you why in a second that I'm doing this. Okay because lifting the fan shroud, it wasn't gonna make it past the oil cooler. So that's why we're doing that. 
and there is a direction that it goes on. You can see the angle. Okay, so the bolt was missing out of the other side. That's all disconnected. That bolt's out. I'm trying to look around. I think that should be it. We're gonna spin it around. I'll reposition you. Hold. I'm forgetting something. It should come off now. Now remember that rod is going down through there for the thermostat. So you might have to kind of jiggle it around a little bit. Jiggle, jiggle, wiggle. Yep, it's stuck. There we go. And there's the rod. Okay. So, we're getting lighter. We're going to go ahead and get this intake out of the way now. Okay, we got to take these two nuts off the intake. Remember, we did them on the other side already. This is where your carburetor bolts down to, obviously. And you have a 13 millimeter nut holding the intake on right there. Okay. And I showed when I did a carburetor and new intake boots installed, I did show that when you're putting, for you tighten this nut completely down and you put your new carburetor on and your intake boots, you actually leave this loose. Let me get the washer off because it's slotted and it can turn like this to make sure your carburetor's even. Or I should say level, I'm sorry, not even. So, all right, this is all galled together. Let's make some action here with the hammer. Let's try to get this apart. This motor smoked. I have other good intakes, so we're okay. There we go. Whew. Can you believe that crap? All right, let's take the alternator stand off. There's no DGR valve. You got four nuts holding it down. Should have moved that out of the way. <laughs> Wow, look at that. It's literally just caked. Whew. Okay, let me reposition. Okay, next we're gonna go ahead and remove the oil cooler. 13 millimeter, I believe. Yes. <clears throat> you got one on top here. Okay. In a second, I'll speed it up. All right, then underneath here, you have two more. Uh, what I'm gonna do, I'll go ahead and remove this cooling tin so it's easier to get underneath there. So I'm going to grab my vice grips. Come on, get out of there. There we go. Good German tin. And underneath, I'll show you whenever I get the oil cooler out, it'll make sense to where the nuts are. <clears throat> it was an awkward setup, I think, but what do I know? I just hang out here. I'm gonna test that. Good German switch. It looks like an original oil pressure switch, although I'm probably putting a, a gauge in. But I think it's good to run your idiot light, we know why they call them that, and a gauge, both. But I think the idiot lights don't come on until you hit like 3 psi or something like that. I can't remember now, but. It's kind of almost too late sometimes by the time you notice in the light and then boom. 
Okay, one more. Yep, it was starting to round off. Luckily we got it. See those two go down through here and there's your seals that you'll be replacing if you ever have a leak on your oil cooler. That's what seals it. And always use good ones because you don't want junk ones on there. Okay, so we got that. Um, I guess I'll start bolting on the bracket to get the uh, yoke onto the engine stand. Okay, give me a second here. All right, I'm not supposed to be lifting anything, but I think my son's working late today. So I'm going to ch attempt to lift this and get it on there. If it starts to hurt too bad because of my lower back issue, then I'll put it down. But let me try to see if I can get it on there. And I got it. Wow, that didn't feel good. Oh, so lift with your back, not your legs. <laughs> You're in for the long haul with me today. And I got to clean this mess up first before I continue. So go ahead and get something to drink, but be back in three seconds. All right, so I got to take these. 10 millimeter nuts off because as you can see there's no drain plug so I gotta take each one off I'm trying to take these off without getting a camera under here because wow here comes water I don't want to, uh, that's a bolt. I don't want to splash the camera lens and destroy it. So there's a bunch of water coming out. Let me see how I can reposition you here. This is going to get interesting. Maybe there was a blunt head gasket and that's antifreeze. <laughs> I'm going to loosen couple more wish there was a better way and if I turned the engine upside down then it would just be flying around coming up the top so uh, sorry guys just give me a minute here Maybe when I turned it over before a lot more crap came out than I thought. Look at that. Ooh, very nasty. Just throw that in there for now. Okay. I got to get a screwdriver and take the screen out because that's when it's really going to come gushing out. Pretty nasty. It's all clumped up in there. We'll go through that later. I'm just trying to get it to drain so we can start taking this apart. I just don't want this pan to fall. I wonder if that'll stay. That should stay. We're going to go ahead and start loosening some other stuff up and I'll just keep letting that drain. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and pop the front pulley off. Hopefully, probably going to have to beat it off of there, but it's okay. It's a 30 millimeter. Okay. 
That came right off. I am really sorry, guys, about that leaf blower thing. I don't know how loud it is in my microphone. I knew this was going to give me trouble. I knew it. Now remember, I don't care about some of these parts. So if you have to, use a puller. I don't care about this. I have a million of these. Okay, what a pain in the butt. <laughs> Let's get these tins off the front because that's what I'm after is the tins. one under here oh did come loose probably because it was saturated with oil all the time more than likely okay I need that stuff all right there's the oil pump it's a little bit different on the auto sticks as you can see so we'll go ahead and grab a 13. I got my tools a mess now everywhere. And we'll loosen it. It almost feels like it's hitting. Oh, no, it wasn't. Okay. Well, there's the gears, just like a regular oil pump on these. Wow, these actually look clean, like they're still in really, really good condition. Oh, well, there's a possibility of it for somebody that would need it. Okay. And, of course... This will have to come off, but I'm sure it's gonna give me lots of trouble. All right, so I turned the motor on its side here. I'm gonna take this tin off of this side. All righty, and we are going to take these and wire wheel the crap out of them, and I can't afford to do powder coating where I would. But we'll paint them and they'll come out nice. Okay, that side's off. Wow, this definitely has never, never been apart. There's your dual relief. I did a video on that dual relief oil pressure. Okay, so let's turn it the other way. Give me a second here. Okay, so we're going to do something different this week. I'm going to close this video out today and get it up and running. All right. Now, in about two or three more days, there's going to be another video again of me splitting a case. I'm going to do two videos in one week. Something different. I know it's usually once a week, but I want to get this done because I got to get on the car and get that all cleaned up and ready for welding the rear end structure together. Uh, my buddy Chuck's going to help me on that. But anyhow, I'm going to go ahead Jump on us tomorrow morning, film it. It'll be up in 48 hours. So two videos this week, guys. Yeah, yeah. And I'm going to go over something real quick. 
Next week is Christmas, so I'm going to do a Christmas video, and the following week I'm going to do a 2021 review. And what that'll be is what I've done throughout the whole year of 2021. Because between Christmas and New Year's Eve, it gets a little hectic with family and everything, which is a beautiful time. But it's hard for me to work on the car, but I will not let you down. I'm doing a nice big video up of what I did for the whole year and merging it all together. And it'll only be probably half hour long, but it'll be something to go through and have a lot of fun. So everybody get ready. Christmas is on the way for those of you that do celebrate it. Merry Christmas. But you'll see another video in 48 hours. I'm going to do two videos this week so we can get it apart. Hang tight. Keep the popcorn ready.